Hey everybody. I'm going to attempt to make um, a ham pie. It's actually called a deep dish ham pot pie. And this recipe comes from um, Southern Living. And I just did a picture of it out of the magazine. Um, I'm not sure which episode it was, but this is the recipe. You can take a screenshot if you want to and then print it out yourself. Um, but I'm going to attempt to do this without my glasses so I don't see the ring in my eyes. Um, I've got everything laid out. You can start with a pre-packaged pie crust. Um, thank you to Abby Holiday for introducing me to that many, many years ago for my apple pie. Um, so what I've done is I've taken the bottom part of the apple pie, I think it's cool enough, and I went ahead and put the pie crust in the bottom, uh, the bottom pie crust in, and I did not have any pie weights. I guess I need to get some of those, but anyway, I baked this for about 10 minutes on 450, um, and then I have um, butter in my um, pot here and I cut up one onion, one medium onion and I, it says sliced, but my family is fooled if I chop it up. So, um, especially Davis, don't tell him, but anyway, there's, um, onion in here and I sauteed that until it got a little bit brown. And now I have some vegetables that were in the frozen food section. Now the recipe calls for cauliflower and I don't remember cauliflower and broccoli and carrot blend. My family's not real big on cauliflower, so I got this bird's eye mixture between um, carrots and broccoli. And I also got just a little thing of the mixed, ve mixed vegetables that I usually put in um, my soups and things. So I've got those in there now on top of the onions, and I'm just sauteing those, um, letting them get a little bit soft. Um, most of the frozen vegetables are already sort of processed. They just need to be kind of heated through. So I am doing that now. And then our next step, you know what? I'm blind as a bat, so I'm just gonna have to look at it. Um, our next step is going to be to add the um, flour, is that right? Yep, the flour, and cook it around for about a minute. And then I'm gonna put in a cup and a quarter of milk, mustard, brown mustard, tarragon, which I have never cooked with, so I have no idea what that's gonna be. Um, and then, um, pepper and cook all of that together. Um, and that's pretty much it. I do have some cheese. This thing calls for um, shredded Swiss cheese. I couldn't find shredded Swiss cheese. And honestly, I don't think I've ever seen it in the grocery store. So I just got sliced Swiss cheese and I got out my handy dandy grater and I grated me some Swiss cheese. So I'm excited about that. I love Swiss cheese. I like Swiss cheese on sandwiches if it is grilled. Now, I'm not one to just like pick up a piece of Swiss cheese like this and just eat it, unless it's on a cracker. Anything good on a cracker, y'all know that. All right, so I've got this about done. I think these vegetables are getting pretty good. They just get a little bit soft. I've done, I did the, um, the onions for about two to three minutes and then these vegetables have been in here as well for about two to three minutes, okay? So I have a quarter cup of flour. I've got it pre-measured out. I'm just gonna dump that down in there. And it's gonna help everything kind of stick together and also make it um, less soupy. When I put that milk in there, that <clears throat> is gonna make almost like a little gravy. Um, when I put milk and flour together, you know that always brings up gravy. All right, and it calls for three tablespoons of the Dijon mustard. So, a good healthy squirt. I know, I should measure. And then after that, I'm going to put in the tarragon and the pepper. The tarragon, it says two teaspoons. So, that's about right. And then for the pepper, it's going to use pepper in it. And then I have never had this happen either. It is asking me to put uh, pepper on the top before I bake it, which, hey, I'm all for it. That's what the recipe says. I'll do it any way that the recipe says the first time. All right, so now I'm going to add the milk. Yeah, this is all sticking together, which is good. That's what it should do. The milk is going to give me that juice that I want, but it's also going to mix with that flour, and it's going to make me some gravy. It'll thicken up good. Oh, yeah, the consistency of that looks great. Y'all, look at that. Yeah, 
It's like a really thick soup. Interesting. I'm excited about this tarragon. It's, I smelled it, and it doesn't smell like it would be, like, icky. So, um, I'm excited about trying it. All right. So, I'm going to let this boil, and I'm going to let it thicken, which it's already starting to do. I'm going to turn it down a little bit and let it just sit and simmer and thicken as I go to my next step. All right. So, I've got to get the cheese. It's, it's just set aside about a third of the cup, but it says to put the um, cheese in with everything else, except for about a third of the cup. I read ahead, and that third of the cup goes in the bottom of the pie plate. That's going to be good. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle that on there because my pie um, stuff is already cold, so I'm good. All right, but the rest of the this goes into this mixture. I have never put cheese in a pot pie, but I'm liking it, thinking it's going to be good. All right, this is all you do. This is actually a pretty quick thing to do once you get everything out. Took me a second to get all of the supplies out, and um, but putting it together is no big deal. And I also, when I bought the vegetables, these right here were perfectly um, sized for, these right here were perfectly sized for bite size, so I didn't have to really cut it up the way that the, the um, recipe said for me to do. Y'all, this is so good and thick. Look at that. That is perfect for a pot pie. And it looks like all that seasoning really got in all around it. Oh, I love it. Love me some pie. All right, so I've had this um, cooling on a wire rack um, and it's ready. You see, I put the Swiss cheese down in the bottom of that. Now I'm gonna just take this stuff, I'm gonna turn the heat off and I'm going to pour it in there on top of the cheese. Oh my, you know what? Holy pololis, I forgot. I forgot something. You know what, this happens. Dump it back in, boom. You know what I forgot? It's a dadgum ham pot pie. What'd I forget, y'all? The ham. All right, I've got a ham that I cooked a couple of days ago and I don't like to waste ham. So I'm putting it in with my big mixture. I think I can use all of it. Might be too much ham, but I'm making a couple of extra little ones that I can um, give to mama and the sitters that are there during the week. That's much better. Oh, wow. Y'all, this is gonna be delectable. But you know what I gotta do now? I gotta use some of that rest of that Swiss cheese and put back in the bottom of my, paint, my pot, pie crust. It's all good. You know what? It's mine. <coughs> Allergy season. All right, now I can put it in the pie crust. I wonder, when I put it in there, I was like, I need enough. I'm supposed to have enough for the um, the other two little ones, and that's where it was. I didn't have my daggum ham in there. Look at that. Oh, that literally looks good. Look, piece fell out. That's good ham. All right, there you go. Now you gotta have something on the top, right? So I'm gonna get the other pie crust, which is not cooked. And I love these that are the Aldi brown because they come with a little piece of um, paper in them that makes it really, really easy to unroll. Before it was difficult to um, get it started and you'd end up breaking the pie and it being all, all kinds of pieces. So you just roll this thing out. Look at that. It's already done for you. I love things that are done for me, but I do like to do something with something for myself. Okay, so now I'm going to plop that right on top and I'm going to pinch it so that I'm rolling it under as much as I can. I'm basically pinching it to the, um, the, the crusty pie crust that is already done underneath there. And then when you bake this, you want to make sure that you bake it on a cookie sheet because this has got all kinds of good, gushy goodness in it and it will boil out and boil over and you don't want that to go down into your oven. So I'm just going to tuck it all under as best I can. Oh, 
Yum. And then you want to cut some slits in it. Um, I, I usually do two straight across, two straight across, and then some little ones because that makes it look all professional, like I know what I'm doing. And then this is where it asks me to put some pepper on top. So here you go. I'm putting some pepper on top. <laughs> All right, so this is gonna go in a 450 oven for about 20 to 25 minutes, but then you wanna pull it out and put it back on a wire rack. And I'll show you that. There's a little wire rack like this. You're gonna set it back on that and let it set for five to 10 minutes and then serve it. And what that does it is, is it allows, you, allows the pie to kind of, um, to not really stiffen up, but it is kind of because it, you want it to, to get more firm on the inside because as the heat comes in, it's going to make more moisture in there. You know what? Today is my forgetful day. One more step that makes it even better is I have a, um, an egg that's kind of whipped up um, and scrambled, and then I'm going to brush that on the top of this. Makes it extra good. Love it. The boys are dove hunting today, and so when they get in, we're going to have this. And we're also going to have um, some fried okra um, that our friend Ricky, um, actually his, he and his daddy, I guess, grew it. And so um, he gave us a bunch of it last, sometime last week. And um, I have cut it up. I've cut some into spears and I put it in the refrigerator already breaded. Um, so that is it, y'all. And then I'm gonna cook it on 450 for about 25 minutes and then let it cool, slice it up, and we're gonna have a good, good supper. I hope y'all have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining Sylvia's Table, where there's always room for one more.